Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, guys. So for today's lecture, we're going to continue with the lecture 9, uh, which will be covering the topics of uh, optical detector and our photo detector. So this is a new chapter 5. Okay, so uh, just to recall, uh, for the previous uh, lectures, we have learned about a, a chapter 4, uh, which was... Uh, current topics of optical sources in which we have learned about two types of optical sources uh, the LED and also the laser diode okay uh, so uh, the content for today's lecture uh, is uh, as follows uh, the first one going to cover the topics of introduction to photodetector okay so we're going to see what are the important parameters in the photodetector and then we're going to see uh, the type of uh, semiconductor photodiode which includes the PN photodiode, the PIN photodiode and also uh, the avalanche uh, PD or avalanche photodiode APD. Yeah? Okay, uh, so this is the excerpt from the CI on the optical detector uh, ch chapter. Uh, so basically uh, we are going to see, uh, we're going to learn uh, the principles of optical detection in semiconductor photodiodes, uh, including the PN, PIN, and APD, and also their characteristics. Yeah? So these are the excerpts. Uh, this is the excerpt from the uh, course information. So basically, in uh, chapter 5, uh, this chapter, we're going to see the fundamental, the working procedures of the photodiodes, and also uh, the type of photodiodes, uh, which are the PN, P PN photodiode, the PIN photodiode, and also the avalanche uh, photodiode. Yeah? Okay, uh, so basically from the word itself, uh, photodiode means that uh, it is a diode, a diode type, yeah, uh, which is similar to uh, what we have learned in chapter 4 before on the optical sources, yeah, where we have the LED and also the laser diode. Uh, so we have learned that in the optical sources, uh, the PN junction was said to be a fault bias yeah, for both LED and the laser diode. Yeah? But for the case of photodiode, which we need to cover in this chapter, the PN junction uh, is said to be reverse bias. Yeah, reverse bias. So for the detector, the, the, the PN junction will be reverse bias, and we're going to see details on this rever reverse bias procedures uh, that uh, enable the uh, the functions yeah enable the functions of the photodiode yeah that so that will be learned later in this chapter five yeah okay so let's have a look on the introduction side of this uh, uh, chapter five okay so the purpose or the usage of optical detectors is actually to convert the optical signal to the electrical signal okay so this is understood uh, as opposed to the um, the, the optical sources, the LED and the laser diode, in which the functions of them were to convert the electrical signals to the optical signal. So for the detectors, it should be the vice versa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there are a few types uh, of photodetectors uh, that can be used. Yeah, in the optical uh, system, uh, which include the photomultipliers. Yeah the pyroelectric detectors and also the semiconductor base uh, photoconductors uh, phototransistors and also a photodiode yeah so out of these uh, photodetectors uh, uh, for the photomultipliers the drawbacks of these type of photodetectors is that the, the size is large okay and it requires high voltage to operate yeah okay so uh, it is not uh, preferred due to these uh, uh, factors, yeah. And then for the pyroelectric detectors, uh, the result, the use of these uh, detectors uh, will result in the uh, heat uh, accumulation due to the conversion of photon, yeah. And it will result in the increase of temperature of detector material. So again, uh, it is not preferred due to these uh, heat factors. Yeah. So 
to the last resort, uh, the semiconductor type is preferable, or the photodiode, uh, to be exact, is preferable because of its small size. Uh, yeah, small size. Uh, it is having high sensitivity and the response time is faster. Yeah? Okay, uh, so this is the, the figures, yeah, the diagram that shows the photodiode. Okay, so it's very small size. Okay, very small size. Right. Uh, so as uh, we have learned from the previous slide, the semiconductor photodiode is the most common use uh, in the optical system. Okay. Uh, so to relate uh, to the, what we have learned in chapter four, uh, the previous chapters, we know that for the uh, laser diode or the LED principle, yeah, the optical sources principle. Uh, uh, we have learned that uh, the light energy of the photon uh, which were emitted during the electron hole recombination. Okay, so this is the uh, fundamental working process of LED yeah, in which the photon or the light energy uh, is actually emitted yeah, during the electron hole recombination or what we say at a radiative recombination. Yeah? Right, so I believe that we have understand these issues very well on the working principle of the LED. Okay, right. So there's a relative recombination, yeah, which uh, which is actually the combination of uh, the electron holes, and this recombination of these carriers will result on the photon emission or light emission. Yeah, but for the case of photodiode, the principle is opposite. Uh, in which uh, uh, the photodiode will be struck by the light, yeah, by, by the light, yeah, and this light striking on the photodiode will create the the electron flow, yeah, electron flow or the current, and the current is basically uh, is produced resulted from the movement uh, of the carriers, yeah, electron and holes in the uh, in the, in in the PN junctions, yeah, okay. So we're going to learn this later in the uh, working procedures of the photodiode later on. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is the diagram, uh, the figures that shows the photodiode symbol. Okay, uh, so the symbol is like this, where we have the arrows, yeah, the arrows which represent the light uh, uh, excited on the uh, photodiode on the PN junctions yeah and as a result the current flows in your circuit yeah okay so uh, in this diagram it shows that the uh, photon or the light which was uh, absorbed uh, will generate the electron uh, hole pairs okay so you can see that there is an electron hole pairs produced by uh, these uh, photon absorptions yeah, photon absorption from the outside. Okay, and the resulted electron and holes that was produced by this uh, photon excitation, yeah, photon excitation will uh, then be transported. Yeah, will be transported, and the transportation or the movement of this uh, carrier carrier pairs, both the electrons and the holes, will then result in the current or what we can say. A photo current. So photo current is that the current is produced by the by the photon which was excited on the PN junction. Yeah. Okay. So this is the, the introduction on the photodiode. Yeah. I hope you understand the difference between the photodiode uh, and also the uh, LED and also the laser diode, which have been learned last time, previously in chapter four. Yeah. Okay, so these are the uh, important characteristics of the photodiode. Okay, um, so the photodetector is known to be used at every front receivers, yeah, at every front end of the optical receivers, in which it will then generate uh, the photocurrent, and yeah, and the photocurrent basically uh, is the movement of the or the, the, the movement of electron and the whole pairs, which is resulted, uh, which is produced by the uh photon excitation yeah photon excitation so basically it can be said that the photocurrent produced is proportional to the incident light intensity or the photon intensity yeah okay 
Uh, so the important characteristic of photodetector that we need to know is number one, uh, the photodetectors uh, must be highly sensitive to the operating wavelength and the operating wavelength. Yeah, so it means that if the uh, detectors is said to operate at let's say one point five micrometer, yeah, so uh, it must be uh, ensured that these particular photodetectors is highly sensitive uh, and it can respond to the light uh, that was uh, transmitted or that was uh, excited on it yeah at this particular wavelength of 1.55 micrometer yeah so you need to be highly sensitive at that particular uh, operating wavelength okay number two you need to have a large electrical response Okay, uh, in which uh, it must be able to produce the maximum electrical signal for the given uh, amount of power, optical power or light, yeah, or photons, yeah. So the response should be very good, yeah. So this is re related to the uh, properties or the characteristics of responsivity, which we will learn later, yeah. So the, the, the electrical signal that produced by the photodetector must be maximum uh, as related to the applied uh, optical power or the light yeah number three uh, the bandwidth uh, must be sufficient yeah or i can see the speed of response to accommodate the information rate yeah of your system of the optical system so the speed of response must be very good in other words, you can see that the bandwidth uh, must be sufficient to uh, to cover, yeah, to cover, yeah, to accommodate the information rate that has been uh, designed yeah, for the system. Okay. Number four, uh, the low the, the detector need to have a very low noise. Uh, in which it will must be having low dark currents or leakage currents and also shunt conductance. Okay, so dark currents and leakage current will be done later uh, when we learn about the fundamental application, the fundamental op operate uh, procedures, operating procedures of the uh, photodiode. So uh, in short, dark current is basically a current which is said to flows, yeah, said to flows in your uh, photodiode without any photon excitation. Yeah, so that is a, a dark currents. Yeah, dark currents without light. Also, still the current can flow in the photodiode. So this is uh, a dark current. Yeah, which is uh, actually it is unwanted. Okay, number five is a low power consumption. Okay, so the photodetectors need to have a very low power consumption and low operating voltage. Number six. Uh, it need to be less sensitive to the changes in ambient temperatures and operating voltage, so it's very important, yeah, because we don't want any uh, abrupt changes on the uh, performance of this photodetector with respect to the ambient temperatures and also on the operating voltage, yeah. So it need to be uh, the photo or the photodetector need to be stable uh, with respect to the temperature changes and also. Uh, operating voltage uh, changes. Okay, number seven, uh, it, it must be compatible with the fiber parameters. Okay, and then we have a small size. Yeah, need to have a small size. Uh, so cost must be very low, and also it must it need to be highly reliable. Yeah. So these are the important characteristics of photodiode that need to be uh, for this application in our optical uh, system. Yeah. Okay, so for the important parameters of this photodiode, the first one is the absorption coefficient. Okay, absorption coefficient, which is symbolized as the alpha naught. So this coefficient is basically a specific parameters in semiconductors, uh, which indicate the ability to absorb the photon, yeah, to produce the carrier pairs, uh, which will be then converted to the photo current. Yeah, so basically. Uh, this absorption coefficient is a specific parameters in your semiconductor uh, in the material itself, uh, which is the ability uh, to absorb the photon and produce uh, the carrier pairs. Yeah? 
Okay, so the light falling on the photodiode, okay, yeah, we know that when, when we have the photon, the light, when it falls, when we excite the photodiode, as part of this uh, light will be uh, absorbed yeah, and part of it will be uh, transmitted. Yeah, absorbed and transmitted. So uh, out of these, we can write that the absorbed power yeah, can be returned by this equation where P0 is the incident power, yeah, incident power to the uh, photodetectors, okay, or photodiode. Yeah, yeah, so the, the, the absorbed uh, power is given by the incident power P0, 1 minus exponential negative alpha naught of D, where alpha naught is the absorption coefficient and D is the distance into the material. Yeah? So this is the equation that enables us to calculate the value of the absorbed uh, power. Okay, So there is another equation uh, that uh, can be used to calculate the uh, photocurrent, yeah? which is produced by the incident light, P0, in which the equation is um, uh, the, the photocurrent produced is equal to P0, yeah? exponential, so not exponential, sorry, P0, E is the charge amount or charge of electrons uh, multiply with 1 minus R. R is the personal coefficient and multiply with 1 minus exponential negative alpha naught of D. Yeah, alpha naught is the absorption coefficient and D is the, the, the width of the absorption region. Or I can say the, the distance yeah, of, of the absorption region. Okay, so this is the equations that relates the uh, absorbed power. Yeah, absorb power into the photo uh, detectors or photodiodes, uh, and then we have the photocurrent equation that can be calculated, uh, which was actually produced by this uh, incident light P naught. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the figures here shows uh, some optical absorption curve for the uh, semiconductor material used. Okay. So we can see from this graph that the absorption coefficient, the alpha naught, is depending on the uh, wavelength, yeah? depending on the wavelength. So for instance, uh, where we have the gallium arsenide, yeah, we can see the, the, the curve of this gallium arsenide uh, from a wavelength of uh, 0 0.6 yeah, up to 0 0.9, yeah, almost 0 0.9 there. Uh, yeah, wavelength of this 0 0.6 and 0 0.9 micrometer the absorption coefficient alpha naught is uh, is depending yeah is depend the value of alpha naught is depending on these uh, wavelength values so the similar things happen to your silicon material it can be said that from 0 0.4 micrometer to about 1.1 micrometer the value of optical absorption coefficient alpha naught is is changed according to this wavelength so it can be said that the alpha naught this absorption coefficient value is depending on these uh, wavelength of operations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, parameters is the uh, long wavelength cutoff. Okay. Um, so we we know that um, there there is a light. I mean, in your photodiode operation, uh, there is should be. Uh, the energy, yeah, the energy of the uh, photon or the energy of light incidence uh, on the photodiode. And this energy of light or energy of incidence photon, the value of it must be greater or equal to the band gap energy of the PD material. Yeah, so we know that because the PD material, photon material is made, made of a semiconductor material, so it has its own uh, band gap energy. Yeah, so band gap energy concept has been learned. Last time in chapter four, okay. So, uh, so for these uh, uh, photodiode to functions properly, the energy, yeah, the energy of the incidence photon must be greater than the band gap energy. So the equations is that uh, this is the energy of the incidence photon. Yeah, the E equals to hc over the lambda. Okay, h is the Planck constant. C is the velocity of light, and lambda is the wavelength of operation. So the energy, yeah, this energy of incidence photon uh, must be uh, bigger than or equals to the band gap energy, okay, right? And as such, we can say that uh, this lambda, yeah, the lambda, the wavelength of operation, must be smaller than or equals to hc 
over the uh, bank gap energy. So it can be said that these equations here, yeah, these equations here is the spatial wavelength for detection, yeah, spatial wavelength for detection, and this wavelength is known to be a long wavelength cut off, yeah, or known as the lambda c. Lambda c is uh, the maximum of it will be the hc over the ed, in which uh, this will be the longest wavelength. Uh, that that will provide or that will enable the detection or photo detection uh, for the said uh, semiconductor material. Yeah, so which means that above the this cut off wavelength, yeah? above this cut off wavelength, this photodiode uh, cannot detect, uh, yeah, or cannot function uh, properly. Yeah, because we have we have defined that this should be the maximum wavelength that can be used for the seed material with this uh, given uh, band gap energy. Okay, and uh, for that particular case, uh, this uh, lambda or the maximum wavelength that can be used for this particular band gap energy is defined to be equal to this uh, lambda C equals to the hc over the ed so above this lambda c the photodiode cannot function properly yeah okay so hopefully by now you understand what is meant by the long wavelength cut off of the photodiode yeah which is the maximum uh, maximum permissible wavelength to be used yeah in your photo detection uh, of i mean in the photodiode for for the given uh, semiconductor material yeah Okay, uh, right, uh, so this is a um, parameters, yeah, relationship between the material of semiconductors, uh, their band gap energy, and their permissible operating wavelength. Okay, for instance, if we have a look at the germanium material, the band gap is 0 0.67. So, uh, this germanium photodiode can work just within 900 to 1300. So this is the maximum wavelength that can be used uh, if uh, germanium uh, semiconductor material is applied. Yeah. So the calculation of this wavelength is based on what we have learned previously on the long wavelength cutoff uh, concept yeah, or parameters. Yeah. The same things applied for the germanium arsenide. Yeah. Uh, with the 1.43 band gap energy. So the maximum uh, operating wavelength uh, for this material, for this photodiode is 850 nanometers, yeah? Okay. So let's have a look at this example number one, yeah? Um, in which we are having a uh, gallium arsenide uh, semiconductor material, and it has uh, the band gap energy of 1.43 electron volt at 300 Kelvin. So we need to determine the wavelength uh, above which an intrinsic photodetector fabricated from this material will, will cease to operate. Okay, so this is related to the calculation of the long wavelength cutoff, in which we, we need to determine what should be the maximum uh, permissible wavelength for the given uh, gallium arsenide material. Yeah. Okay, so for this particular case. Uh, we know that uh, the EG, yeah, the EG for this, sorry, the EG for this material, sorry, yeah, okay, okay, uh, the EG for this material is given by 1.43, yeah, the EV, which is the bank of energy. Okay, so according to the equations of long wavelength cut off that we have learned before, so we know that uh, the energy of the incident photon must be bigger than the bank gap energy so that uh, it will uh, enable these, uh, the carrier pass to be generated. Yeah, so the HC of a lambda must always be bigger than, than the, the bank gap energy. Okay, and from this equation, we can then write that the lambda, yeah, the lambda well, shall be less than or equals to hc divided by the band gap energy. 
Okay, so from here, from this equation, we can use it to calculate the maximum lambda. So the maximum lambda that is permissible, or I can say that long wave can cut off lambda t shall be equal to ht over the eg. Okay, h is a Planck constant, and it is equal to 4.13 times 10 power of 5, uh, sorry, negative 15 per uh, electron volt uh, seconds. Okay, and this shall be multiplied by the uh, C. Uh, sorry, I need to uh, adjust the position of this. Uh, this Uh, right, so from this equation just now, we can write the long wavelength cutoff uh, uh, value, so which is hc over the eg, where h is your Planck constant, 4.13 times 10 power of negative 15 electron volt seconds, and multiply with the speed of light, 3 times 10 power of 8 meter per second, divided by the uh, bank gap energy, which is 1.43 electron volt. And by calculation, we are going to get that the maximum lambda or the wavelength cutoff will be equal to 0 0.866 uh, micrometer. So that will be the maximum wavelength that is permissible for the given gallium arsenide uh, material of photodetector or photodiode, in which above this uh, wavelength, the performance of the photodetector Will be deteriorated and uh, might be will cease to operate. Yeah, so it is the wavelength of 0 0.866 micrometer, which is maximum wavelength that can be used for the given uh, material of semiconductors. Okay, uh, so I'm going to stop at this session of lecture. So we're going to continue with the part two of lecture nine um, very soon. Yeah, so okay, thank you very much. We're going to see you again very soon. Thank you.